We are in the last chapter, which is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Paul is addressing uh, how believers have to conduct themselves in the workplace. And he tells us, he, of course, we're using the old English bond sermons referring to employees. Uh, he says, you know, employees, I want you to honor your masters, meaning your employers or your bosses, so that the name of God and his doctrine must not be blamed. Paul is saying, Timothy, you need to tell people, you need to tell God's people that in the workplace, how they conduct, conduct themselves, their conduct in the workplace, how they go about their life in the workplace is so important. So that outsiders, people outside the church should not get an occasion to blame the church or the teaching by their behavior. In verse 2, he goes a step further and he says, you know, if employees have a believing boss, all the more give him honor. And he says at the end of verse 2, teach and exhort these things. Meaning, Timothy, you've got to address workplace issues in the local church. If you don't teach these things, then you're not giving yourself to wholesome words. Literally meaning words of truth. Truthful words. Which are aligned to the words of Jesus himself. And to godly doctrine. Doctrine or teaching that furthers and develops godliness. And then in the end of verse 5, he says, you know, people deviate so much that they suppose that godliness is a means of gain. You can be godly and have money. There's nothing wrong with that. You can be godly and make money. There's nothing wrong with that. What Paul is saying is don't use godliness. Don't use our faith. Don't use the church. Don't use the ministry. Don't use the work of God's kingdom as a means for personal Okay. He says in verse 6, godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay. Contentment means to be happy, to be satisfied with what you have. There's nothing wrong, we know from Scripture, as we see throughout the Old and the New Testament Scripture. And Paul mentions it later on in verse 17, that it is God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. It is God who brings abundance into our lives. It is God who blesses us. It is God who gives us prosperity and wealth and riches. And we know there's nothing wrong with it. God seeks and desires to put the wealth of the world in the hands of his people. So God does that. And he's desiring to do that. The blessing of God is there. But what God wants to make sure is that we have the hard, right hard capacity to handle what he blesses us with. And this is what Paul says. If you desire to be rich, or verse 10, the love of money is the root of all evil. In view of all this, verses 11 uh, through 16, Paul is telling Timothy, here's your life, O man of God. You got to flee these things. Stay away as a man of God from the love of money, from using godliness as a means for gain. Stay away from those things. Instead, you focus your life on pursuing righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, endurance. You must pursue these virtues. Verses 17 to 19. For those of us whom God has blessed us with money, with wealth, with prosperity in our lives, what are we supposed to do? Verse 17. He says, Come on, those who are rich, don't get proud. Don't think God is blessing you because you are so spiritual or you have great faith or you have this and that. You put your trust in God because it is God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, what should you do? Do good. Be rich in good works. Be ready to give. Be willing to share. In other words, do good, be generous, bless others with what God has blessed you with. When you are generous to others, there is something that's happening on your behalf in eternity. And finally, verses 20 and 21, he closes off this chapter by saying, Timothy, I want you to guard what was committed to your trust. The verse that we would like to really highlight is a key takeaway is verse 6, godliness with contentment is great. Okay.